I am Genevieve and I am with The House of Medics. I am a pharmacist. I hope you watched my live on Sunday. If you haven't, please do go on their YouTube. I'm sure the link will be in their description box on Instagram. Okay, let's get straight into it. So the common misconception of pharmacists is that they work only in shops. Now, let me tell you, the world of pharmacy is huge. There are so many different places that pharmacists can work. So let's just take hospital, for example. Even in hospital, the number of roles that a pharmacist can fulfill are so many. So firstly, you have pharmacists that work outpatients. So these pharmacists cater to patients who have been um, daycare patients, who are leaving the hospital and are taking medications away with them. Then you've got inpatient pharmacists that they deal with those on the wards, so they're more ward-based. They help um, with drug histories, so collecting information about um, who you are, what you've what you've gone through in the past medically, your social history, and things like that. And then they also provide the medicines for patients on the wards, even. In hospital, you can get patients, you can get pharmacists who specialize in different things. For example, pharmacists that specialize in cardiology, pharmacists that specialize in anticoagulation, so that's blood thinning, um, matters of the blood. You can get pharmacy consultants, don't get it twisted. You can get pharmacy consultants. And then you have pharmacists in the community, which is your normal shop pharmacists. We call them community pharmacies. Then you've got locum pharmacists. These are pharmacists who, remember actually when your teacher was always sick and you had to have that supply teacher? Yes, locums are similar to supply teachers, I think cooler, um, <laughs> but they essentially fulfill the role of a pharmacist when the main pharmacy, pharmacist is absent. And then you have pharmacists in regulation. So they help with policy making. They work in the regulatory bodies at the GPHC, the RPS, to ensure that all our pharmacy practices are safe and up to par. And then you've got pharmacists in the army who take care of the soldiers. You've got pharmacists in prisons who take care of, of um, pr prisoners who help prepare their medication boxes. A lot of prisoners um, suffer from mental health, so they will be mostly specialising in matters of mental health. So listen, pharmacy is varied. Don't get it twisted. We're not just people in shops, okay? We're not just people in shops. So there are way more roles than what I've mentioned already. So please, when you're studying pharmacy, do your research. Don't be limited. Expand your horizons. There are pharmacists who are entrepreneurial, just like myself, who can run their own businesses. Yes, healthcare people can run their own businesses. So if I were you, I would get online and start researching on what other avenues pharmacists can do. So everybody always wants to know whether a pharmacist like myself can make medication. So actually, such pharmacists work in the pharmaceuticals. So that's an industrial, that's what we call an industrial pharmacist. So they will be those who have more experience in compounding. Um, they will know things like excipients. So excipients are the extra things that go in your tablets as well as the active ingredient. Whereas I am a locum pharmacist, I work predominantly in community pharmacy and hospital. Uh, we are more clinical, we are more patient facing. In, in, in industry, you don't really get that patient facing experience. So just to make it clear, I mean, I dabbled a little bit in compounding at uni, if that helps. <laughs> but then if I wanted to actually make medications, I would go down the industry pharmacy route. So, as you all know, we've been in a difficult season the last two years with the COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. And a lot of people are very nervous to have the vaccine because they don't actually understand why it came out so quickly. So I'll just quickly explain. Generally, a pharmaceutical industry are always researching. They are always growing. They are always expanding. And so the COVID vaccine didn't come off at once. It was something that was already in development. I mean, they are researching different um, bacteria, different viruses. And so they were able to use the templates that they had already to develop this vaccine. So for 
those of you who are nervous thinking that it came out of the blue no it didn't they already had the template and what they did was put in more research to see how they could specify it to the COVID-19 um, virus so don't be fearful do your research which is like my number one piece of advice research 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 as I said on my live and I hope that you've gone back to watch it and if you haven't watched it go and watch preparation is everything okay if you're a science student the work will be intense I say start early get in there get stuck in there early and you'll find that over the months the years of studying it will become easier and easier for you that's one thing I learned and I learned well by the time I got to fourth year it was so easy because I started early. So preparation is key. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, House of Medics. I had so much fun. Love you. <laughs>